Okay, so today we're having some technical difficulties. That is why I'm recording this lesson today. I apologize to the families. I don't know what happened with the Zoom link or the Zoom ID. Um, hopefully it will be cleared up by next week. Um, I just wanted to tell you in your packet for this week's lesson, there is this book and it's called, I can tell the difference between small problems and big problems. Um, you don't have to worry about this. We will be doing it in school on Monday. So you can just set that aside and they'll probably bring it home on Monday also, maybe Monday or Tuesday but when we finish it. Um, so today what we're gonna do, today Friday is always science day. So we will be doing something related to science. And today I have a sink and float experiment. I forgot one thing, I need some tape. Okay, sorry about that. I tried to be all prepared and I had the tape out and I must have put it away. So sink and float. What do you think it means to sink? Right, it means it falls to the bottom of the water. You're right. What do you think it means to float? Float. Oh, I bet somebody got it right. Float means that it stays on top of the water. So today what we're going to do is I have a few things that I gathered up and we're going to see if they sink or float. And then after we see if they sink or float, we're gonna put them in the correct bin, either sink or float. And then we're going to graph them on our graph also. And you have these materials at home. As you can see, I used some of the ones that they had, that they suggested. And then I drew in some also that I didn't have pictures for or things that I found around the classroom. So the first thing we're going to try to see if it sinks, <coughs> excuse me, or floats is a coin. I have a quarter, a coin. So I'm going to use a big word right now and the word is prediction. We are going to make a prediction as to whether we think the quarter is going to sink or float. And prediction's a big grown up word, I know. Um, but prediction means to kind of guess what's going to happen. So when you do this activity at home, you can make a prediction as to whether you think the item will sink or float. And then you can do, put it in the water to see if it sinks or floats. You test it out and see what really happens. So think right now, if you think the quarter will sink or float. All right, you have it up in your head? All right, I'm gonna put the quarter in the water and we're gonna see what happens. Oh, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm gonna kind of scoop back a little bit. I think that will help, but the quarter is on the bottom of the bin of water. So did the quarter sink or did it float? You're right, the quarter did sink. So I'm gonna put the quarter into my sink bin and then on my graph over here where it says result, I'm gonna color in the red circle in the sink column because the coin definitely did sink. All right, the next thing on my list is a crayon and I have a purple crayon here. Okay, make your prediction. Do you think the crayon will sink or float? All right, I'm gonna put it in the water. Let me move this bin, put it in the water. Sink or float crayon. <gasps> Look at that. The crayon is on the top of the water. 
That means the crayon did what? Right, the crayon floated in my float bin. Oh, I forgot to do this on the last one. What did I do first? The coin. So I'm gonna put over here to, I was going to also kind of show you a different way to graph it. The coin is going to go under sink and the crayon, remember, the crayon floated. That kind of surprised me a little bit. I wasn't sure, but I, if I had to guess, I would have thought that crayon might sink. All right, so the crayon's under float. All right, I have to fill in now. The crayon floated, so I'm going to use my blue marker on my graph and fill in the blue circle because the crayon floated. So we're going to use blue for float and red for sink. All right, the next thing is a key. Let's see. All right, I got my key here. Do you think the key will sink or float? I bet you're right. Oh, it went directly to the bottom. Yep, it did sink. All right, so I'm gonna take my key out and put it in my sink bin. And I'm gonna find the picture of my key. Oh. And I'm going to put it under the key and the coin sank. So under the sink column. And over here, I have to have my key with my red marker. And color in our red for sink. All right, the next thing we have, oh, I have one of our balls. One of our balls that we played with before. Okay, think, predict, make that prediction. Do you think it's going to sink or float? All right, let's see if you're right. Putting the ball in our water. Can you see? It's staying on top of the water. So you're right. I heard somebody say it. You're right. It is floating. Put our ball under float and I'm going to mark my blue marker for the ball because the ball floated. All right. So the way you can do this, oops, I got to put it in my float bin. The way you can do this at home, you can use the pictures like we have in your learning packet or you can go around your house and maybe find some things. Like I said, you can draw some pictures of them and then you can test them out to see if they are going to sink or float. I'm not going to do um, all of them because I think you get the idea, but the other things I had were an empty water bottle, a pencil, a glue stick, a paper clip, a seashell, and one of our color counting bears. So like I said, you can do this at home. This isn't a science experiment that you can do at home um, and see what sinks or floats, okay? All right, so I'm going to move on to, I have a little nursery rhyme for you today. And you may have heard it before, but it's hickory dickory dock, all right? Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, and down he run, hickory dickory dock. All right, so what you and your family can do is come up with different things that rhyme with each number. I'm gonna give you some examples. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck two, the mouse yelled boo, hickory dickory dock. Number three, hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck three. The mouse buzzed like a bee. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck four. 
the mouse stomped on the floor. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck five. The mouse danced a jive. Hickory dickory dock. And you can go up from there, maybe six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Just be silly and make up some silly rhymes. All right, so that's hickory dickory dock. All right, I told you yesterday we were gonna dance. Are you ready to dance? I hope so. I didn't hear you. Are you ready to dance? Okay, we are going to do the freeze dance. I'm gonna put it on for everybody. Moms and dads and your brothers and sisters can join in also doing the freeze dance. Okay, let me get it on. <clears throat> All right. This Labor Day, save 10% on a Casper mattress for a limited time only. All right, get ready. Let's play the party freeze game. It's fun to do a little movement, isn't it? All right. Um, let me get back to where we need to get. <sighs> Whoops. Oh, mm, I'm so sorry. Let me get off of that. Let me get back to where we need to be. Oh. Let's see. Oh, this is really trying me today, isn't it? All right, let's do this. Where's my strange thing? Strange thing. Sorry. Okay. There we are. Okay, that only took a while. Um, all right, so the last thing we're going to do today. Um, next week, we're really going to be talking about what it means to be a good friend and being kind. So I'm gonna start next week's lesson today for the end of our lesson. Um, so I'm gonna show you a story that is called, It's My Turn. And it's all about taking turns with your friends. So enjoy the story. I'm going to sign off um, after the story's done. 
I will see all of you Monday and have a great weekend. Welcome back to the Storytime family. Today we're going to be reading It's My Turn by David Bedford Mayfield. Let's start. It's my turn. Oscar and Tilly found a playground. Shall we play on the slide? asked Oscar. I'll go first. Oscar. Not yet, said Tilly. It's not your turn. Wow. That looks like fun, said Oscar. Is it my turn now? Not yet, said Tilly. Tilly went round and round on the merry-go-round. Is it my turn yet? asked Oscar. No, said Tilly. I haven't finished. Tilly went round and round and round and round. I feel dizzy, said Tilly. Have you gotten dizzy in one of those things? Hee <laughs> hee, cried Oscar. It's my turn now. You're too dizzy. This is fun. I feel better now, said Tilly. Can I slide after you? No, said Oscar. It's not your turn. Can I go on a swing after you? asked Tilly. No, said Oscar. It's still my turn. Get off, Tilly, shouted Oscar. It's my turn on the seesaw. The seesaw doesn't work, said Tilly. But when Oscar jumped on the other end, Tilly went up in the air. Whee! Then Tilly came down and Oscar went up. Woo! And then Whee! Woo! Oscar and Tilly played together all afternoon. Season and nice to share. It's the best. Do you share with your brother or your sister? Well, you should, because sharing means having more fun together. We like sharing our house. The end. Did you like It's My Turn? Give us a like okay, and subscribe. So that and was, thanks so much for dropping that by. That was our story we'll about you. sharing. Maybe over the weekend you can practice sharing with people in your house or maybe a friend, um, but we're gonna be talking more about it next week. So like I said, have a great weekend and I'll see you Monday.